Hey everybody. So uh, thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, it's a really great topic actually. Um, uh, we hope you've been following a little bit, uh, you know, about the different heart rate uh, variables and metrics that we can track um, and how it relates to our overall health. Um, you know, really, really important stuff. I know it kind of sounds like we're geeking out a little bit when we talk about it, but um, you know, this week's topic is uh, heart rate variability. Um, you know, we've talked about heart rate, respiratory rate, heart rate recovery so far, uh, resting heart rate, things like that. So, um, you know, this is kind of something that takes all that to the next level. Um, it's also one that's really not too well known, um, you know, unless you're kind of in the industry or unless you really take an interest in this kind of stuff and you look at it yourself. Uh, but we're talking about heart rate variability. What heart rate variability is, um, in, in essence, it, it looks at the, the measure of the time in between individual heartbeats. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen a traditional EKG or um, you know traditional, um, I guess, uh, track of uh, heart rate, um, where you kind of see like the blips on the screen, they kind of go up and down, right? Where each big peak um, uh, grouped together with the other lines around it represents a single heartbeat. Um, and then, you know, they really kind of, they look sort of smushed together. Um, but what we're looking at really is the time in between each of those individual beats. And that's, that's measured in milliseconds, right? So, you know, really, really fine, um, you know, units of time. Um, but your heart's beat uh, 60 beats per minute. And so there's, um, or, you know, that's typical average resting heart rate, right? Of, of course, there's going to be plus or minus. Um, you know, but any given time period, um, the heart rate is not symmetrical. It, it, it's not even, it's not exactly, let's just say your heart rate is 60 beats per minute. That doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be one every second. Okay. Um, the timing will be off and that time in milliseconds between each beat is actually going to be different from beat to beat. Um, you know, within a given minute, within a given hour, that average difference in, in time, um, uh, between those two intervals is going to be different. And in essence, that's a really good thing that represents heart rate variability. The fact that there's variance in between each individual heartbeats, especially if you're kind of sitting there at rest. Now that sounds a little counterintuitive, right? You would think, well, you know, we want things to be even, we want things to be symmetrical, we want things to be predictable. Um, after all, that's how a lot of things work with our body and when it comes to health. But this, um, you know, th this, this metric is somewhat counterintuitive. Um, that variance is a very good thing. The reason why is because of our autonomic nervous system. Your autonomic nervous system is responsible for things that you can't control in your body. So how your organs work, how your hair grows, how your fingernails grow, um, how well you digest your food, things like that, right? Um, and the autonomic nervous system is split into two different systems. You have your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system is responsible for what we call the fight or flight mechanism, right? So um, in periods of high stress, your body is ready to go, a uh, heightened response for everything, um, heart rate increases, respiratory rate increases, your neurologic response to everything is heightened and it's your overall sharper. So you're primed and ready to go. That's your sympathetic nervous system. Your parasympathetic nervous system is the complete opposite. That's what you feel uh, on Thanksgiving day after you've eaten a lot of turkey or after any big meal and you just kind of want to sit there and you know kind of relax and veg out. Uh, parasympathetics uh, are responsible for what we call rest and digest. Um, so very different, but you know um, other uh, internal organ work uh, again, like your fingernails growing, your hair growing, things like that. Things that aren't directly related to or directly associated with a heightened physical stress on the body. Right? So you have sympathetics where heart rate goes up, parasympathetics where your heart rate and other systems are going to go down. Your body is constantly at a tug of war between those two systems. Both of those systems are constantly sending input to your, uh, to your brain, to your heart, um, you know, or sorry, your, your brain is sending um, input to your heart, to the rest of your body, telling it what to do. Your sympathetic nervous system is constantly telling you to rev up and get ready to go. Your parasympathetics are constantly telling the body to chill out, calm down, things are good, let's just rest uh, you know, for a little bit. So there's a constant input and barrage of input from both of those systems at any given moment. That's what creates that variance. And that's a good thing because that means your body is in a healthy balance. No one system is overpowering the other. No one system is sending more input to override the other, okay? So at, at regular rest, that's a good thing. We want to see a high variance. We want to see that change um, in time intervals in between each of those heartbeats. So that represents your heart rate variability. And the higher the variance, 
the better representative of healthier um, you know body you are or, or how ready you are to uh, produce fitness or to uh, tackle stress or or do anything like that because that means your body is much more responsive and adaptive to a different type of stress or a, a different environment right so I, I hope that makes a little sense so uh, again just to recap a little bit sympathetics are always telling your body to get ready to go parasympathetics constantly telling your body to rest a little bit both of those inputs are going to your uh, your heart at any given time, and that's a good thing because you're kind of just ready to go. You're ready to adapt and you're, and you're ready to respond to anything that's gonna be thrown your way. So we want that. There are times when heart rate variability will be low, and that's either a good thing or a bad thing. So for instance, say I go work out in the gym, or say I go for a run or I'm racing or something like that, right? Well, there's a pretty definitive stress there on my body. I'm going, my legs are working, or my body's working for the, for the workout. Um, and your heart rate has to be up to supply more blood to the area. So, I mean, that's, that's high stress. Your heart rate is doing its job. Um, the sympathetic nervous system is doing its job. And so it's going to be somewhat predictable there. We, we kind of know that, you know, we, we don't want variance. We know that we want your heart rate to start beating um, a little bit quicker to respond to that activity. So that's a good thing. When is low heart rate variability a bad thing? Well, pretty much if you're sitting down doing nothing, you're supposed to be resting and you actually your heart rate response is a little higher than it should be, or um, you know the, the variability is not there because your sympathetic nervous system is overriding the parasympathetics and you're getting a single input um, and it's out of balance. That shouldn't happen if you're just sitting there at rest. If you're sitting there at rest, again, your body should be relaxing. Your body should be um, you know cruising through uh, its, its normal systemic response to the stimulus, which is pretty low. So uh, we don't want to see a high heart rate, uh, sorry, we don't want to see a low heart rate variability when you're just resting. We don't want to see one system overriding the other. We want to maintain that, that good balance, that normal balance from your parasympathetics and your sympathetics. So uh, that's usually indicative of something else going on, something underlying, whether you're overall fatigued, you didn't get enough sleep, or you're overtrained and you're tired, um, or maybe you have an injury that your body's trying to heal from and, and recover from. Um, maybe you're dehydrated, um, or maybe it's something a, a little bit more harsh, like you're actually sick, you're getting a cold, you have the flu, um, or you have coronavirus, you know, that, that's actually a real thing. That's kind of what prompted this whole series that we're giving to you is there have been a number of individuals, some higher level athletes that have, you know, their watches, their fitness trackers have predicted um, coronavirus before they actually got tested and tested positive because these things can now track pulse oximetry, heart rate variability, resting heart rate, all that. It, these fitness trackers take your, your normal metrics, your normative data, and it's constantly comparing it to what's happening in real time. So. Um, yeah, it's a real thing. And heart rate variability is probably one of the more important metrics to give us a better idea of what your body's doing at rest. If you're supposed to be at rest, but your body's telling you you're really stressed out, we can predict a lot of things, all right? We can predict whether you need to alter your training stimulus, we can predict whether you need to get more sleep or just take a day off, or we can even predict injury and sickness. If you continue to push through, you're gonna get sick. We all we all know what it's like when your family says, oh, you're running yourself ragged, you look tired, stop burning the candle at both ends, you're gonna get yourself sick. That's kind of the old adage and that's something that you know your friends and family tell you, but the data can back it up and we finally have ways to track that data. So again, heart rate variability is a really good thing. Uh, we want nice even balance in the body from one uh, part of your autonomic nervous system to the other. And when we have low heart rate variability, that's not good because we know one system is overriding the other. We're not in a good balance. Your body is not in a good place. You're at increased risk of injury or sickness. And so these are, uh, these are some of the things we hope you can learn a little bit more about, um, especially if you get some of the new fitness trackers. Again, this is my fancy new Garmin. All right, 945, um, and it does all that for me. And I'm really, really happy with it, and I'm, I'm gonna be interested in tracking a lot more data over the next few months, uh, getting into training, and um, you know, just kind of learn a little bit more about how we can help people uh, be healthier as well. So that's heart rate variability for today. Uh, sorry it's a little lengthy, but it's kind of a good topic, and I wanted to make sure I explained it well enough. Please, guys, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, if you got a fitness tracker, kind of let us know. Just give us a thumbs up, read some more about it. It's really good stuff, um, but enjoy, and we'll see you guys next time.